Employers that did a background check on Facebook, what's the most disturbing thing you have seen? I'm not a manager, but most of my team participates in interviewing potential teammates. I was preparing for an interview and I routinely Google their names to see what comes up. In the past, I've been pleasantly surprised to find industry-related accolades that the applicant was too humble to list on their resume. But this time, I came up with a long string of blog posts. I got sucked into the rabbit hole at that point, and the next two hours were spent reading all of these blog entries about his wife who was involved in widespread internet trolling and bullying. There were websites dedicated to how horrible this woman was. People invested in domain names related to the message and paid for hosting just to call her out. So I was left with quite the dilemma. As a result of her bullying, her victims and opponents had dedicated quite a bit of time to doxing her, and as a result, her husband and his employer. I figured I would hold on to this information and only inform my boss if we all felt he was a solid candidate that we would hire. The guy came in for the interview, and while I was asking him questions the whole time, I was thinking about his insane wife, but not saying a word. He somehow worked into the conversation that he had recently divorced, which at the moment further complicated the issue in my mind. When we met as a team after the interviews to discuss how he performed, my boss said he wasn't impressed with his responses to the technical questions and didn't seem like a good fit for the team, which was a huge relief to me. I'm not certain what the right call would have been had he been a good fit. It would be wrong to judge him based upon his ex-wife's actions. But if there's an army of people on the internet targeting her husband's employer in efforts to get him fired, that can be a headache to deal with. It's always hard to tell with these things, but from what I did see, it looked like she started it, and it was with a lot of different people that didn't appear to be related. It seems like all of her victims found each other through blog comments and banded together. Sad thing is, it's not like she was 22 years old or something where you'd almost excuse the immaturity. She was a mid-40s housewife with too much time on her hands. Hey, I know of a mid-40s upper middle-class soccer mom who started a slam blog to anonymously trash other people in her community and allow others a chance to anonymously gossip and slam them in the comments area. It was really weird. She had what appeared to be a charmed life but spent a lot of her free time cultivating something so ugh, negative. Story 2 Oh boy, I once interviewed a guy for an entry-level manufacturing position. He was in his mid-30s, I guess, and he seemed alright, if not a little socially awkward and mentioned he wanted the job because he had a baby on the way and wanted something solid as he was picking up odd jobs with a relative's company. This job required basically no skill, so we hired nearly everyone we interviewed. After he left, I went back to my desk and looked him up on Facebook. He was obsessed with Rihanna photoshopped himself into pictures with her, had her as his cover photo, and had a lot of softcore filth with her head photoshopped onto the models. Nearly every one of his status updates were about her. It was freaking weird as hell. The kicker, though, was that his profile picture was him with a photoshop picture of a pregnant Rihanna with his hand on her belly. He did not get a callback. So I'm thinking he might not actually have a baby on the way. Story 3. Here's a few. I worked HR for a company that hired tutors to work at a central location with school-aged children. Check the applicant's X feed and it was full of I hate kids and end me now sentiments with gun emojis. It wasn't anything horrific, but the deciding factor for hiring person A was when I did a background check on person B and 99% of his Facebook photos were of him creepily staring into the camera without a shirt on. Out of the dozen-odd shirtless photos, only one had a like from a relative, but that same person also commented a question mark in another photo. A colleague hired a factory manager, not realizing he had been accused and acquitted on a technicality in a high-profile case. Wouldn't have come up on a background check as he was acquitted, but the woman in the factory flat-out refused to work for him, and their spouses threatened to come to the factory and rough him up. Company had to dismiss and pay him out on probation. I did a background check on my boss, actually. He was arrested for fourth-degree arson. He pleaded guilty. He works in Shanghai now. I want to add that thinking you can follow generic instructions to be successful is the real mistake. You still need to stand out among your peers and learn a marketable skill to make money. Just having a degree doesn't help a company that hires you make money. Implementing what you've learned while still learning more and more in a proven setting, now that generates profit. Story 4 
Not me, but while in training to be a manager, my trainer was talking about interviewing and what questions to ask versus what we legally cannot ask. I don't remember exactly how it came up, but I remember asking him the worst answer he ever received from an applicant. He goes on to tell me about this guy who was amazing on paper and interviewed even better. Basically the perfect hire. Well, my trainer noticed that the job prior to this one was an amazing higher salary type job. So my trainer asked about his last jobs and the guy sighed, saying, well, you'll discover it when you do a background check. On my last job, I came to work buzzed and ended up doing something horrific to someone with the forklift. My trainer pretty much ended the interview there out of shock and the guy was never brought back for another interview. Another story I have, I'm not an employer, but one guy from my high school class ran into some trouble with his boss because another guy from our class who had the same first and last name as him was convicted and it was all over the local news. He even had to post a status on Facebook to do damage control, saying, I am not the 21-year-old who did it. They had the same name, same age, same high school, and lived in the same city. Story 5. So I worked as a trainer in a few different countries. We hired back office support, IT, and the like. This young woman interviewed well and was hired. Her third day, she no calls, no shows, and we can't contact her. She'd already friended a co-worker and she shared a status post, AWOL, once again, to her friends. The co-worker shared the post with me. She tried to make up an excuse and come back, but you can't do that junk, especially if you brag about it and are an idiot. It's not narking if you screw up that early and are that brazen. I also want to add that I like how many people can't find jobs because of a completely unrelated reason to their skill base. Managers like a different team? Well, guess you don't deserve to eat then. Story 6. Not for a job, but in high school, our FFA officer elections were kind of weird. It was supposed to be 40% test, 60% vote, but if one of the previous offers senior year put in a good word for you, your chances were a bit higher. Anyway, this kid really wanted to be an officer, so he asked me to help him out the best I could. It seems no one else would. So I went home and went on the old book of faces. Dear God, the guy was crazy. Like 14, smoking, drinking, all kinds of crazy stuff, posting about all his women. 2 out of 10 did not recommend. Story 7. This wasn't me, and it wasn't for hiring purposes, but at my old job, I worked as a cashier. Two of my male co-workers were mucking around in the break room, and one of them sat on the other's lap in a non-sexual manner. My female co-worker took a picture of it and it became someone's profile picture. When it was cropped, it just looked like a side hug was happening, but the full pic showed the lap. The pic ended up getting reported to the head office and those two boys were fired. My female co-worker was forced to go to a SH seminar and was put on probation. I could understand all this because it's about protecting the company, except that every single woman, myself included, in the store had made numerous complaints against the grocery manager for being lewd making comments, and just being creepy. They didn't do a single thing, not even when he asked me if I would dye my hair down there red to match my hair. Not even when he told me he used extra large rubbers because the smaller ones were too tight. Yeah, right, buddy. He still works at that store in the same position. I guess since the customers don't see it, it doesn't matter. Story 8. I used to work for a recruitment agency, and one of our recruitment consultants worked with a candidate to get her a high-level job with a new high-profile client. None of them would ever do background checks as they were all too bothered about getting their commission and their goal was getting placements at any cost. It backfired because the client googled the candidate after they had gotten the job and they had paid us. Turned out the candidate was wanted by Interpol for international fraud. We had to pay thousands of euros back to the client and lost their business. Needless to say, background checks are very important. The consultant should have been fired too. She was one of those women that cried on demand to manipulate and my boss was too weak so she kept her job. Also, I went to look up someone that had sent in their resume a year or so ago. We were really short-staffed at work and started looking back at formerly rejected resumes. When we searched her on Facebook, we found out that the lady had passed away. Story 9 A friend boss just hired that guy for a provincial government IT job. The guy had a particular name and my friend thought it was familiar. After a quick Facebook search, he found out that the guy had been arrested and was waiting for his trial for having committed fraud at his last job. On Facebook, he was talking about his lawyer and how everyone was against him. His last job? The provincial government. So what happened to the boss who hired that guy? He was promoted, of course. 
All right, since we're halfway through the video, it would be super cool to take a quick break to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out, and it might also help out to uh, clean up our Facebook pages and profiles before we apply for our next job, though, right? Story 10. As a hiring manager, I never access their social media. However, I do check all references and call them back a day later to verify. I have people get their friends to act as former bosses, and I'll ask details like their full name, including middle name, their position with the company, and their company's address and HR phone number. You can usually tell who's lying at that point, but it's my job to be thorough. I'll look up the company online and call their HR directly without calling the number they give. I have a pretty good success rate with that one. My favorite story came from a kid who applied for a supervisory position. He claimed to be currently employed at Forever 21 in the mall, so I decided to go in and check him out. I got on Facebook to match the name and job just so I could get a picture of the guy. When I went in, I found him and waited for him to approach me. He never did. I went to him to ask a question and this kid was incredibly rude as if I was a terrible inconvenience for asking for help. The next day, he came in for his interview and I was expecting shock when he saw my face. This kid had no idea who I was. I asked him about his job and he started on about how friendly he is to customers and the like. I let him know that I was in there the day before and saw firsthand how friendly he was. I told him that I didn't feel confident that he would work out based on what I saw, so I wasn't offering him a job. He got defensive and started cussing me out, calling me names for leading him on when I could have said no from the beginning, giving further evidence that I made the right decision. Story 11 not an employer, but an employee that works third shift. A few months ago, we were in need of people, so we were taking just about any application. So on a slow night, our AGM decided to look people up on Facebook that had applied. All public accounts. One of the applicants had in their description, work is for wussies, swag for life. Lead us to say that person didn't get hired. As for myself, the AGM from the story above mentioned that he couldn't find me, which is a good thing. And yes, I do have a Facebook account. Also, we had one girl apply to be a secretary. She liked all of her own pictures and statuses. She seemed to have conversations with herself on face space. She had a few paragraph-long diatribe complaining that she didn't get hired because of her tattoos and piercings and how these witches were discriminatory. I made sure that I didn't meet her in person before I told her we weren't hiring. Really sad. Kinda considered her due to her looks and resume, but there was a status looking for Adderall and Vicodin. Can't have people like that working for me. Too many people have their Facebook profile and posts privacy set to public. Story 12. I'm a recruiter, and when I'm screening someone over the phone, I will use their cell number to pull up their Facebook profile. Yep, most of you have your phone number publicly associated linked to your account. Because personality fit is so important with most of the hiring managers, I will see if you like to cause trouble or might not pass a test because you like to post pictures of yourself smoking grass. Most of the time I ask, why did you leave your last job? And often they will say something like layoff and around that time on their Facebook timeline, there will be some post about how their manager is a witch and they walked out Jerry Maguire style. Lesson here is, unlike your phone number from your public Facebook page. Story 13. I was hiring for a position as a cashier at my gas station. Going through resumes and seeing a guy who currently goes to USC or UCLA, can't remember which, and had minimal retail experience, but I figured everyone's got to start somewhere, so I decided to give him a call for a phone interview. It goes to voicemail and I leave a message and decide I'll see if I can find him on Facebook. I end up finding him and his profile picture is him with a red bandana holding up the gang sign. I figured, hey, maybe it's just a sarcastic picture, right? I start scrolling through his photos and posts and they are all of just himself or in a group of guys all holding up the gang sign. He calls me back while I'm in a meeting and he leaves me a voicemail. He spoke in an intelligent manner and seemed well-mannered, but unfortunately I had made my choice on a new hire and decided to at least give him a courtesy call thanking him for his application so that he's not in limbo land. I call and thank him and apologize that the position is filled, but if another opens up, he is first on my list for interviews. Dude goes off, full-on ebonics at this point, cursing me out, being aggressive, and threatening me. I hang up and block his number. I tried really hard to not judge him by his Facebook profile and figured, hey, maybe it's just some long-running sarcastic joke with him and his friends holding up gang signs as they attend classes at UCLA or USC. Whether he was or wasn't a gang member, IDK, but he certainly couldn't handle rejection. 
Two weeks later, a position did open up. He sent in his resume again when I posted the job listing online. Story 14. One girl I did a Facebook check on was apparently seriously into witchcraft. All of her pictures and posts had to do with becoming a witch and casting spells. That application quickly went into the, uh, nope pile. I'm going into further detail here. The activity she was posting was that of revenge and wishing death on others, not Wicca or any harmless religious activity. I don't care what anyone believes in their private religious life, but I would not rather employ someone that is openly wishing death on other folks. Another one I remember had dozens of pictures of her passed out, hammered, and nearly every post of hers was about getting wasted. We decided to pass on her too. And another one was a potential candidate in this scenario, and it was her Instagram, but she applied for a job as a receptionist at a real estate office. Before this job, she worked at a gentleman's club, and her Instagram was still public. The response and subsequent denial was liking the one photo of her in my old uniform. She changed her settings after that. Story 15. Not an employer, but someone who was uh, checked on as part of a freelancing gig I did last year. They genuinely didn't understand why I had a Facebook account but didn't use it. I haven't logged in for months and have only ever used it to write silly jokes rather than sharing images or life stories or spam or cat videos. When discussing my main film and music work or traveling or family or general shenanigans, they couldn't get their head around me not logging it or having the need to tell someone about it all the time. It was a weird conversation. I nearly turned down that role after that meeting. However, they were willing to pay my required rate. I suggested something much higher than normal as I was kind of hoping they wouldn't pick me for being too expensive, so I didn't care about their nonsense behavior in the end. Story 16. I wouldn't necessarily call it disturbing, but it was the deciding factor in not hiring somebody. We interviewed a guy for an entry-level position. His interview went well and the other two people on the hiring committee were enthusiastic about him. But something about him bothered me. I don't normally check applicants out on Facebook, but I decided to in this case. His most recent post was something to the tune of, Just got fired again. This is so much BS. Someone asked him in the comments what happened, and his response was, It was my third no-call no-show. I was too hungover to bother. These a-holes had it coming for scheduling me right after a holiday. Entitled, irresponsible, and daft enough to broadcast it in a public post. Sign me up. Story 17. A guy who said he had an assault charge 15 years ago. He wasn't lying, but that was the start of 27 pages of criminal history that included two years of incarceration, during which time his app said he was self-employed as a carpenter. The history was predominantly assaults, thefts, and possession of illegal substances. I'd never before seen 27 pages of criminal history on one person. I will add this, though. He actually did turn his life around. He ended up working at the gym I went to and then got an additional job at a seafood distributor. I never would have guessed that he was the guy that would turn it all around, but he did. Story 18. Not an employer, but handle work comp claims. Just had a guy claiming complete incapacity while going on four trips to Asia and back, as well as hyping his business on all of his Facebook pages. Just sent a subpoena for his business records, so it should be fun. My job is mostly depressing. People automatically assume I'm there to screw them. Think of all the attorney commercials that portray us as evil. Employers screwing legit people and expecting me to go along. Coworkers who act like benefits are being paid out of their wallet. Scummy doctors who do nothing to help an injured worker but just rack up a bunch of useless treatment to get more money. And people who pretend to be hurt. Once in a while, you can't actually help someone, but usually when things get complicated, you get the above. My friend had a worker's comp injury a few years ago and his doctor was refusing to give him an MRI for a back injury because L and I won't cover it so I'm not even going to ask. He had constant sciatic pain in one of his legs, numbness, muscle spasms, and general lower back pain that felt like a hot stabbing sensation. They kept telling him he had sprained his back and he kept aggravating it so it wasn't getting better. After two rounds of PT with therapists who acted like he was a burden for 10 months, he finally asked his LNI caseworker personally if he could get an MRI because his doctor kept diagnosing him with a sprain, but nothing for that treatment helped. He said, absolutely, and he was surprised that wasn't the first thing the doctor asked for when he came in with a work-related back injury. Herniated disc and a pinched nerve, got a back brace, two steroid epidurals over three months, and PT with an amazing therapist. Oh, and his doctor got fired from that practice around the time he asked for an MRI and finally got it. 
I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you made it this far, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the next one. What's the most messed up reason you fired an employee? Story 5 was definitely messed up and maybe something you can learn from. I'll see you in that video, and thank you for watching this one.